I've officially been on Airbnb for over two years, so let's go over everything that I've learned since I started. If you want to watch last year's one year, what I've learned and what I've earned video, I will link it in the comment section down below as well as the bio, and I'll try to pin it up on one of these corners. I don't know if I know how to do that, but yeah, go back and watch last year's and also watch this year's, and then we can compare it together. Let's get started. The first thing I've learned is that your PMS will either make or break you. It is literally as simple as that. Your PMS is probably one of the most important softwares that you will have in your company. And I have had my fair share of going back and forth between PMSs and it's just never something you want to do. A switching your PMS is probably like the worst thing you can do, the most stressful thing, the most time consuming thing. No one wants to switch their PMS. All the big PMS systems that you probably know or have heard of, I have most likely used and tried, and it's just been a lot switching back and forth between different ones. They all are relatively similar, but they're all different in their own ways. So what I think really helped me was just identifying the problems within my business and then seeing which company can solve those problems. So talk to all of them, research all of them, read the reviews on all of them, and then make a choice on which PMS you want to use because switching is just a nightmare and I do not wish it upon anyone. The second takeaway is that this is not a side hustle. When I first started, when I had like three Airbnbs or maybe even 10, I would consider it possibly a side hustle, but now that I'm upwards of 50 plus units, this requires my full attention 24 seven. I'm basically on call 24 seven. At any moment, a problem or an issue could arise. And I need to be present in order to solve that problem. It's definitely not a side hustle. If I were to do anything else, my business would definitely be affected because it does require my full attention. It may look a little different than a normal job. Like you may not see me sitting at my desk 24 seven, but 24 seven, I am working in one way or another. Maybe in the beginning, like I said, when I had three units, I could definitely see myself having three units and still working a nine to five and making it work. Um, but now that I've scaled upwards of 50, definitely not a side hustle. Next thing is operating agreements. If you are going to do business with anyone, and I mean anyone, your dad, your mom, your sister, your cousin, some guy you met at a networking event, no matter who it is, please have an operating agreement. I will not go into too much detail, but take it from me, you need an operating agreement. It sounds so simple, sounds so like no brainer, but when you're doing business with people, especially people you know, you trust, you're not really thinking, oh yeah, let's get these massive contracts in place that legally bind us together. It's kind of something you can overlook at times. I'm guilty of overlooking them, um, but if something bad happens, you're gonna really wish that you had those operating agreements. So take it from me, no matter who you do business with, even if it's your mother or your father, have an operating agreement in place. They're really simple to make. It's really not a huge contract, but if things go south, you're gonna wish you had them. So from the jump, have an operating agreement. My next takeaway is networking is key. Guys, this past year I have networked my little heart out. I have gone to so many conferences alone. And not only has it allowed me to grow as a person, but it's also allowed my company to grow in ways that I literally could not imagine. It's forced me outside of my comfort zone tremendously. I've always been a pretty extroverted person, but deep in my core, I am introverted. So going to these events, especially alone, has forced me outside of my comfort zone. I definitely will be continuing to go to these events. I've met so many amazing people. I've also got to meet so many of the founders, co-founders, product development, so many people who work on these companies that I use every single day, that my team uses every single day. And I've been able to build a relationship and bond with these companies that I love. And I would not have been able to do that if I just a user through my laptop. So if you've been thinking about going, I highly, highly recommend, and you'll probably see me attending a lot more events and even maybe speaking at some. Wink, wink. Another major takeaway is the proper vetting of your guests. In the beginning of starting my journey, obviously I didn't know everything that I know now. One of the biggest things is that you need to properly vet your guest. There's only so much that Airbnb or VRBO can do to vet guests. And in the beginning, I definitely relied on just what Airbnb said they did to vet their guests, like their background check and identity verification. Um, I only relied on that. And for the time being, I thought that was enough and that was okay. But as I've continued to scale and as I've continued to have more and more guests over time, 
the crazy things that have happened um, have made me realize that I need to do a better job at vetting my guests. So one of the things I've been doing is using Superhog. They have a really, really good ID verification process. Um, and basically, if you don't submit a photo of you with your ID, of your physical ID, then you never get the check in code. This is something I recently just started doing, um, but it was definitely a necessary step and I'm happy that I added it because it's just an extra step to make sure that my properties are safe, that my guests are safe, and that I maintain a good relationship with my leasing offices. I've had my fair share of nightmare guests, of police reports, and having IDs of every single guest that I'm hosting is just a minimum requirement for me now. And if you're not willing to send a photo of your ID, you probably have ill intentions anyway because it really is just like so simple. So now that is one thing that I require. I use Superhog to get all of their IDs. I keep them on file and if I ever need it or if the police ever need it, I have it on file. But yeah, definitely vetting your guests is so important. So, 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 so important and there's so many softwares out there that can help you vet them better and added more security to protect you and your company at the end of the day. The next thing I want to talk about is direct bookings. Direct bookings have been something I have really tapped into this past year. This was not something I was doing over a year ago. I recently just started really focusing in on it. Um, I know I've talked in the past about how I used to have a magnet in my Airbnbs where I would retarget the free Airbnb guests that I was getting from Airbnb and then have them reach out to me to book directly. And that was a great, great starting point. And it really helped reassure me that direct bookings were something that guests wanted and that the volume was there to host people directly. Um, the amount of reoccurring guests that I have had is literally insane. I literally know like people's first, last names, how many kids they have, what job they do for a living, where they live, where they travel, because of how many times I've hosted the same person over and over again. Um, and for example, Airbnb takes 3% per booking and that 3% adds up, especially if you're doing short-term rentals. If I have a guest checking in today and they check out tomorrow, that 3% still gets taken out. Um, and when you have 50 plus units, that 3% adds up really, really quickly and it ends up being a lot of money. So with direct bookings, I'm able to avoid those third party fees and I can really focus on maximizing my profits and also just like having more control over my business, having more control over like the whole entire guest experience. Um, I think it's important to like own the whole thing as in like the whole guest experience, not just when they check into your property, which is kind of how I feel like Airbnb is. I don't necessarily own the whole experience. Airbnb has a lot of control over what happens, what doesn't happen um, up until the guests check into my property. And then that's when I feel like I truly have control of the guest experience. But with direct bookings, I feel like I have control over the whole thing. I have more say in everything that happens. So direct bookings has definitely been something I focused a lot on this past year and I'm really happy with where it is at within my business. I've been able to make more money, build a better relationship with my guests. I still have the magnets inside of my units, but now I use Logify for my direct bookings. They're also a PMS system, um, but I really, really love Logify because of the direct bookings. It's literally just like a hotel. If you wanna go book a hotel, you go online and you can book directly online. Everything is done all online and it's personalized. Um, with Airbnb, you can't even like search people's names or property names. And that's one of my biggest pet peeves. Um, but with direct bookings, I can literally send you straight to my website and you can book directly through me, which I really, really love. And I know my guests love as well. Logify is actually doing a 50% off Black Friday sale. It's the biggest sale they've done. Uh, my code doesn't even get you 50% off. So if you guys have been thinking about joining Logify, I want a better PMS or want to really focus on direct bookings, I highly recommend Logify. Not only are they doing 50% off, they're also doing free onboarding and free dynamic pricing. So you're getting the whole package for like the best price possible and free onboarding and free dynamic pricing. So it's kind of like a win-win, a triple win if I say. So use the link in my bio if you are interested in starting. Again, don't use my code because you only get 15% off. Um, they're running a separate Black Friday sale that if you use my link, you can get access to it. Um, so don't use my code, 
use my link and you can get 50% off um, for signing up and also free onboarding and free dynamic pricing. Another major takeaway is I wish I had created separate Airbnb accounts per property and separate banking accounts per property as well. The reason I say I wish I created separate Airbnb accounts is because I have a bunch of apartments and a bunch of different complexes and not all of them are the same. So for example, I have a bunch of A listings, a bunch of B listings, and a bunch of C listings. If these reviews are all being attached to the same profile, these C listing reviews are gonna negatively affect my A listing properties as well because they're under the same profile. So if I could go back two years ago and completely do this differently, I would take my C listings in one complex and put them in one account, my B listings in one complex and put them in one account, and the same thing for my A listings, put them in a separate account so that the reviews are correctly displayed for the correct properties. Obviously you can go in and look per property, but generally if someone's coming to book, they're just gonna go to your profile and scroll through. And those are not not organized or categorized at all. Then I'd also create separate banking accounts per complex. So if I have 10 properties at this one complex, I would create a separate banking account for all 10 of these so I could better track my finances, my expenses, and it's just easier to see exactly how much each property at each complex is making if it's separate. If it's all combined to the same bank account, it's really hard to track which property is making more money, which property is not doing so well. And it's really hard to see where all the money is coming from. So if I could go back, I'd also create separate banking accounts per complex. Another major takeaway, which I'm pretty sure I talked about last year, but hire well and pay well. Your team is literally the backbone of your business, whether it's your cleaning team, the leasing team, or your VAs, like your co-hosts, your property management team. Your team is your backbone, especially when you operate remote. There's no way Way I could physically do any of this on my own without my teams. Um, so I make sure that my team knows that it's a safe place. If there's issues, they can reach out to me. If they're not happy, they can reach out to me. If they need time off, they can reach out to me. And I pay them well. You need to pay your employees well or they're not gonna do their job and they're not gonna do it well. Finding a team that is willing to grow with you and who cares about your company has been a lifesaver for me. My team is literally like my family now. I consider them family and I make sure that they, you know, get paid well for their time and their hard work. There's a lot of things you can cheap out on in business, but definitely do not cheap out on your employees and definitely do not cheap out on paying them well because it will reflect in their work. Another major takeaway is dynamic pricing. Dynamic pricing is ever changing. I have been doing Airbnb for over two years and dynamic pricing is still something that I am learning. It varies depending on per property, per location, per season, per market. There are so many factors that affect dynamic pricing or just your pricing strategies in general. So always trying to learn more about it, networking with people who know about it, talking to different companies, just being a learning sponge about pricing specifically is gonna be make or break because pricing is literally like the most crucial thing of your business, I believe. Dynamic pricing is just its own world. I am well versed in dynamic pricing, but I'm still learning. But fast forward one year, I definitely know a lot more now than I did a year ago. Um, so yeah, just, Throw yourself in there and you will figure it out. And lastly, my 10th takeaway from year two on Airbnb is you need to be willing to pivot. You need to be willing to adapt. This business has a lot of problems. There's things that come up 24 seven in any business that you do. It doesn't just need to be Airbnb, but in business, in life, in personal, in relationships, you always need to be willing to pivot. And I think that is very relevant in my business and my journey and where I am at in life. Um, things happen, you know, and you just need to be willing to pivot. And you also need to be willing to adapt. There's a lot of times that things happen where if I didn't change and adapt, I would have been left in the dirt. So be willing to adapt and be willing to pivot and you will be all good. So yeah, that wraps up everything that I've learned within the last two years of my Airbnb business. Obviously there's more than those 10 things that I briefly mentioned. I could go on and on about everything that I've learned. Those are the 10 biggest things I would say I've learned within the last year. Again, if you wanna see what I learned last year, I'll put the link to that video in my description in the comments and I'll also try to pin it up here in one of these corners. But yeah, this is everything I've learned. If you want a separate video on everything that I have 
I've earned within the past two years. I can also make a video about that. So comment down below if that's something you're interested in. Thank you all for watching. I hope you took something good away from this video and you learned something new. I can't wait to keep making these every single year. Showcase my journey and it's really cool to look back on and see how much I have grown. But if you guys have any specific video requests, please comment down below. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you thumbs up this video. And yeah, I look forward to talking to you guys very soon. Bye.